Yo, what up? Welcome to Made by Ozzy. I'm Ozzy. So today we're going to take our very first step on our thousand mile journey. Um, you can check my channel introduction. We are working on FPGA based gaming council and crypto miner using the DE0-CV um, FPGA development kit. So today our goal is just to get the FPGA development software downloaded and installed. We're going to get a project set up um, that's configured for the FPGA on our dev kit and then we're going to do the simplest possible FPGA program I could think of which is just we're going to tie one of the buttons to one of the LEDs and that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are github.com. I'm going to go ahead and make the new repository for this uh, project. Um, we have to decide on a name uh, and I decided I'm going to call this entire project Copper because that is the name of my boxer and I've had him for the longest and that's what we're going to do. Copper. It's a FPGA gaming council and crypto miner. It is public. Everyone will be able to see it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a readme right now. We'll won't worry about these things right now. And it's ready. Okay, so now that I've made the repo, I just need to clone it to my local. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the repo URL. And I like using um, Git extensions to manage my Git repos. It's a really nice GUI. It's free. Um, so go over to clone repository. Um, and it already copied over the, the URL. Um, destination. I'm going to save it to my desktop right there. And here we are with the README. All right. So one thing we're going to need for certain is the user manual for our development kit. Um, so I'm I already uh, I'm going to close this because I have it right here. I'm going to go ahead and make a folder in our repo, and I'm going to call it um, documentation. Well, not with an S. And go ahead and just move the user manual into there. So there we'll have it in the repo. Okay, so let's get Cordis downloaded and installed. And you get that from the Intel website. I will put this link in the description below. Uh, we want the light edition because it's free. The other two cost money. We'll just select the latest release. That, that's fine. Um, I'm using Windows, so I'm going to select Windows. Um, and let's see tells you which devices you get to choose. So since we're using a DE0-CV that actually uses a Cyclone 5, that's what the CV stands for, we do not need the other ones. Um, so let's add everything I need. I need Cordis Prime. Uh, so you do need to log in. Uh, so you need to make an account, and I already have one. Um, so just go ahead and log in. No, I don't want pro, I want light. Okay, okay. Windows. Cordis Prime. Let's do it. There we go. Just straight into downloads. Okay, Cordis setup is all downloaded. We are also going to need the Cyclone 5 device support, the DE0-CV. Uses Cyclone 5, so we'll go ahead and download that now. Okay, so we got the Cyclone 5 downloaded, and I just went ahead and put them all in my downloads folder. Um, it's really important that you put everything you download into the same folder. Um, this uh, light setup is going to look for the device files when it's installing, so yeah, just make sure. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. Yes, I accept the agreement, which I totally read. Sure, it looks like a good enough install directory to me. Uh, yes, this is what I want. Uh, okay, that's, um, that's a lot of 69 gigs. Oh, that means what I got.
Okay, Cordis is finished installing. Uh, this is the last step. Uh, launch USB blaster driver. Yes, we are going to need this in order to talk to the and program the FPGA. Um, yeah, I like having shortcuts. Um, and let's go ahead and launch it. All right, let's install this driver, the USB blaster driver. Yes. Finish. Awesome. So I am going to select the middle one, run the Cordis Prime software. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, first time you ever turn on the FPGA kit. Um, I got the power plugged in, I got the USB plugged into my computer. Go ahead and press this red button, turn it on. And you may have heard my computer pick that up right now. Um, and it's just a little, uh, it's got a, a demo sequence programmed on to the FPGA so we can kind of make sure that everything's just powered up and working. It's going through the hex characters, a little little sequence of LEDs. Um, so good, we know everything's working, great. Okay, and this is the Cordis home screen. Okay, so we are gonna need one thing before we get started, user manual. Because what do we need to know? We need to know the exact chip that this is. And I'm gonna guess it says it somewhere on here. Here it is. We have a 5CEBA4N type chip. So we're going to go new project wizard. Okay, new project wizard helps you create new projects. Yes, and I don't want to see this again. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put it to the repo I made. So that's over here on my desktop. That is going to be copper and just the top level. Actually, I am going to make a folder for FPGA. What is the name of this project? Copper. Next, empty project. Next, select the design files. None. Board, Cyclone 5. In a package. It is a. Let's see if I could just search for it. Oh, yeah, I could just search for it. 5CEBA4. 5CEBA4. Okay. F23C79. F23C7. All right. Hmm. Hope that N doesn't doesn't affect me too much. Okay, um, and we are not using these other build level tools. Okay, five C E B A four F twenty three C seven. Okay, finish. Okay. Now we have made our project. Okay, now everything looks good to me. Let's go ahead and make a new block diagram type file. I always like making my top level um, uh, file a block diagram type. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rename this block diagram copper. This is going to be my top level assembly copper.bdf. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So let's check out what files uh, actually just got created for this project. So this is the folder. Um, and these are the files that got created. We actually just created this copper.bdf um, diagram file. So these two and this folder db got created. So the qpf is the actual Cordis project file. So this is the one we you know would right click and you know we want to open with Cordis. So we'll set that up. And the other one is the copper.qsf. This is like a hardware description file. Um, and this is uh, we're going to be working with this one to actually tell the FPGA. Um, what pins 
it's going to use and how we're going to give it a name. Um, if you open it up, it's just a text file, nothing scary, too scary here. Um, just some syntax that we have to learn. Um, and let's figure out what we're going to set up. Okay, the first thing we need to know is which of the FPGA pins is tied to one of the push buttons on the on the dev kit. And so the four push buttons here are tied to these inputs, U7, W9. We're just going to use the first one here, U7. And the second thing we need to know is the FPGA pin for an LED. So all our LEDs are tied to here. We're going to use AA2. Okay, so now we are going to tell our program how to find the user input button and LED. And so what that is, is, and we'll go over the syntax of this more in the future. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to type set location assignment. And let's do the push button first. Um, that's pin U7. Um, and this we actually can give it whatever name we want, but we're going to go ahead and keep consistent with the names used in the, uh, um, in, the, in the user manual. So let's go ahead and do the LED now. Same keyword here. So location assignment. The pin is different. It's uh, AA2. And this is going to be to, oops, to LEDR0. Okay, easy. Hit save. All right, I'm going to close this. And let's open up Cordis again. All right. Uh, so we created it. Uh, the project knows that those inputs and outputs exist now. Now we need a way to use it in our top level document here. So we're going to go here to um, in, we're going to add an input. And then we have to name it. And we got this it doesn't really matter what the name is, but it does matter that what you name it here and what it's named in the QSF file are the same. So there's an input. Now we're going to do the same for the output. Okay. L E L E D R zero. Perfect. Now we just need something to link the two. Um, so we're going to add a wire in between and that's come here to the symbol tool. Um, expand this down. We're looking for primitives. Buffer, just a simple wire. This guy. Okay. Um, get the additional wire tool and just draw a little bit out on both sides. One for the input, one for the output. Um, didn't mean to draw that there. Go ahead and delete that. Okay. Now you just type it and you can click the name. Type just type, type in the name of the input. Type in the name of the output, LEDR0, and that should do it. Bam, first FPGA program. So let's save, and this should go, this should compile. So it goes through a few steps when it's compiling. Um, analysis and synthesis is where it actually makes sure the logic makes sense. Um, fitter, place, and route is where it tries to actually drop the logic onto the FPGA fabric. Um, so it's possible to make a design that's totally logical, to logically works, but maybe just doesn't fit on your FPGA. That, that's pretty common. Um, assembler is what will actually generate the um, bit stream that is going to go on it. Um, and then timing analysis is a tool that helps you determine um, if the timing parameters you specified will actually be met. Okay, great. Compilation was successful. So let's go ahead and program it onto our FPGA. Um, and for that, we need to go to tools and open up a new programmer. All right, great. Um, now, this one has the USB blaster filled in. Uh, but FYI, when I was practicing this offline uh, before this here, um, the drivers for my USB blaster were not set up properly. So I'll go ahead and insert how to install those right now. So it looks like the drivers for the USB blaster did not get auto installed. So let's just do that. I'm going to point it towards the Intel folder. And that's going to be here in C, Intel FPGA Lite um, 20.1. Let's just point it there. Um, include subfolders. Yes, let's see if that will do it. 
Okay, found the drivers. And at this point, the driver installation actually did just force restart my computer, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but for now, it's working great. So let's take a quick look to see what was actually generated um, by that. We have this new folder now, output files. And what do we have in here? We have an SOF. And this SOF is actually going to be what we write onto it. Notice copper.sof. Um, there are two ways to run an FPGA, a volatile way and a non-volatile way. The SOF is the volatile way. What that means is um, what we program onto it will be lost once we power cycle. Um, but that's okay. That's not a problem. So go ahead and click it. Press start. The, the blinking lights uh, on the FPGA will go away. And then let's see if it works. Okay, so the display on the FPGA definitely changed. Let's go ahead and press button zero and see if it toggles that LED. And indeed it does. All right, great, successful program. And if you power cycle it and turn it off, turn it back on, it goes right back to the demo unit. Great. And I wanted to show you guys, I uh, made this website to help follow along. Um, this one goes over the overview of the whole project, you know, that I went over in the first video. Uh, we're going to do 3D graphics, we're going to do crypto mining, um, and the vision I sort of have with this. Um, I put a couple things up here. Uh, for You could um, get the GitHub URL if you ever need to download the manual for the DE0-CV. Here it is. Um, also the link to where to download Cordis. And if you ever like this sort of material, if it's helping you out, you could you know, consider supporting me uh, with cryptocurrencies. All right, and there we have it. If you followed along, you've now officially gotten your first FPGA program working. You're officially an FPGA programmer. Make sure you go update your resume. <laughs> so next time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a clock input and we're actually gonna make a timer so we can get that light or another light uh, just blinking. All right, um, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week.